She let her dog poo, on the airport floor. Refusing to clean it up, because. They have people for that. If you like true revenge stories, you found the best place for your vengeful needs. I create them with fleeky visuals, dipped in artificial love. In this episode of Business Revenge Stories, we'll meet customers, you'd rather pay, just so they don't use your services. We start off with a real party pooper, who refuses to clean her dog's poo poo, off the airport floor. Little did the rude lady know, her rude behavior was seen by a comedian. But the unintentional aftermath of his prank, went supernova. Followed by a client who wants the best service, with all the bells and whistles, on the condition, he doesn't have to pay for it. The scammed entrepreneur, finds a simple solution, in the advice of a wise friend. Lastly, a rude lady that isn't the direct customer, but still interferes with the job of workers, just trying to do their job. She parks in their construction reserve spot, refusing to move her car. So they simply work around her. Before we start, make sure to buy the like button's favorite, expensive sweater for its birthday. But add a little itching powder to the inside, and make the like button wear it, during the party. Let's dive in. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. These revenge acts might be disturbing to snowflakes. While walking to my gate at Los Angeles, International Airport, I noticed a woman whose dog was in the middle of doing its business. The woman was loudly FaceTiming with her back to the dog, so I assumed she didn't notice. That was likely the thought shared by the gentleman who tried to get her attention. Excuse me, miss? He said in a polite tone. The woman glared at him. Your dog, he sheepishly continued, pointing to the mid poop pup. The woman rolled her eyes and went back to FaceTime as the man slinked away, seemingly embarrassed. Some people are just so damned rude. She bellowed to her FaceTime companion with no hint of irony. When her dog finished, the woman started walking away, leaving everything right on the airport floor. Another woman tried to stop her, asking if she's going to clean it up, being as shocked as the rest of us were. They have people for that. The offender replied, disappearing into the crowd, as much as someone yelling into their phone can disappear into a crowd. I stood near the pile and warned people to walk around it while someone else got a maintenance worker's attention. No one said anything, we were so shocked that anyone could be that horrible. When I got to my gate, the woman was there too. Great, we were both going to Tokyo. When I travel abroad, I get embarrassed by other Americans doing things 100 times less embarrassing than leaving animal feces on the floor of an airport. To make it worse, her dog was now barking at everyone who walked by. I have nothing against people flying with their dogs, I do it often. But it is a privilege I take seriously. My dog is well trained and behaves better than most people. He certainly behaves better than that booty hole. Speaking of booty holes, there is a pet relief area inside the airport, past security, just two gates away from where the party pooper let her dog go to town. It didn't matter, though. She was the type of person to litter three feet from an empty garbage can. While her dog barked at the world, the woman had moved from FaceTiming with no headphones, to listening to music with no headphones. I don't like to throw around the word, sociopath, but I don't know how else I could explain, just how selfish and terrible of a person she was. I bet her car was somewhere in long-term parking, parked across three spots with paint on the bumper, from the child's bike she hit without leaving a note. Everyone else tried to ignore her, sitting as far away from her as they could. Happens to be so, that I am not everyone else. I sat down right next to the horrible woman. Are you going to London on business? I said. She responded gruffly with, I'm going to Tokyo. Annoyed that I interrupted her music. I said, oh, then you better hurry. That flight got moved to gate 53C. This is the flight to London. I figured I could give her a little moment of panic as payback, for how terribly she was treating everyone. I didn't predict what would happen next. She grabbed her bags and her dog in a huff, and stormed out of the gate without even checking. She was so self-involved, she didn't notice that the monitor at our gate still said Tokyo and almost everyone at the gate was Japanese. Based on her actions, she believed me that the fight had been moved, so she's also an asshole for not thanking me. Some people, I thought as I watched her rush away from the gate without stopping her, are just so damned rude. The flight to Tokyo was at gate 69A, so the terminal was 53 gates on the other side. And I felt guilty knowing, she probably berated some poor clerk, who had to explain to her that there was no gate 53C. I don't know if she made it back to this flight before we took off or not, 
but I didn't see her board and I didn't hear her dog. Her missing her flight was not my original intention, but it would be a fine punishment for her being so rude to everyone and making a low paid stranger clean doo doo off the floor. What makes me wonder if I went too far, is the knowledge that Delta only has one flight to Tokyo each day. Whoopsie. Maybe she can rebook on another airline. I hear they have people for that. For those of you who want to play internet detective and demanded to see my ticket, as if that even proves anything, I'm a stand-up comedian with a show in LA last night and a show in Tokyo tonight. But if that's not enough for you, here's my ticket. And yes, Delta does allow dogs on flights to Japan. For those who are still being douchebags, I hope you will your suitcase, into her dog crap. This story happened to me about 7 years ago. I was starting my side business, doing IT work for businesses, and had some successful side gigs for a few companies. I found word of mouth was the best way to gain new clients, because entrepreneurs tend to network with other business owners. Tony was one such client who had heard I had done some work for a client, and called to see if I could help. His company's needs, were to stop using a semi-accounting service that they had been paying a percentage of their profit to for process payments, purchase orders, and billing slash receivables. He brought in an accountant to work on a new product, it's pretty well known. They wanted a server to be accessible remotely, and had already paid their ISP for a static IP for the server, but needed the actual server, redundancy UPS, and firewall device. I explained that for the product, they could probably set up a workstation instead of a server, which would cost approximately $3,500 in total. It would also be much easier to operate. But the owner refused, he wanted a full-blown server system with all the bells and whistles. He explained that he would likely be using the server for a CRM and a few other systems later on. Overall, the entire cost for the system would be $8,000, not including a few other services that needed annual billing, VPN and remote service. Equipment cost was $7,500, my labor charge was $500. UPS was $1,500, server was $3,800, and refurbed firewall, Cisco ASA, with programming by a third-party specialist was $1,800, plus a spare rack that was $400. I got my contract signed, put an order with my distributor and the firewall specialist and got to work 10 days later, when the firewall came in last. I finished the job in a single weekend, and got everything up and going after a call to the ISP, whom did not like the firewall appliance I installed, for some reason they had to tweak things on their end and finally allowed the traffic to go through once more. I confirmed function with the owner, whom verbally approved and was happy. I sent my invoice promptly on Monday, which had a one-week term of payment. When I saw no reply, or payment after four days, I messaged Tony and asked if they had received my invoice. To my surprise, he replied the server was not working. He proceeded to call me and tell me that the whole thing was a total waste of money, and I should have never done the job. I of course apologized, and informed him I would be on my way to fix whatever the problem was. When I got there, they refused to let me in to see the server, claiming they had someone coming over to fix my mishaps. At that point, I informed them they still needed to pay for the equipment, and we could maybe discuss my labor, after I figure out what's going on. Tony refused to let me in, and was pretty upset. At this time I became pretty upset. 2.5 weeks had passed since I ordered my equipment, and my distributor was needing to get paid within 45 days. I was getting very nervous and was thinking of taking it to small claims court. This changed, when I talked to a friend who informed me I could pull a mechanics lien. I informed him this was for IT, and he stated that mechanics lien where I live, can actually be pulled on various industries and IT was one of them. So I started the process to fill out and file a mechanics lien on Tony's company. Much to my surprise, there was no court date. All I needed to do was provide considerable proof to clerks, and later to the constable. After filling out the mechanics lien and serving him notice, I once again gave him the opportunity to the pay the $8,000 owed. By this time, I had spoken with my distributor and he switched my account from net 45 to net 90. Which meant they increased the time frame to 3 months to help me out, due to my situation. He refused via phone call, and got him on text. I took the information I had and went to the local constables, whom after seeing the mechanics lien and proof, set up an appointment to meet me at the place of business to take back my server, UPS, and firewall. I went in on Tuesday, which I had learned was the day the accountant came in to start the week. Constable and I arrived at 7.30 am, right on opening time. At first they refused entry, 
until Tony came by and was informed I was enforcing my mechanics lien and would be taking back my equipment. He immediately got riled up and claimed I could not take the equipment, because a new person had replaced it all. The constable asked if I had serial numbers and models for the equipment, which I did. We go in and find my server, UPS and firewall, all in the exact same way I left it. The server showed it had been online for the entire time, no real changes were noticed and as far as I could tell, no one had worked on it. Tony began to chuckle when I shut the server down, and actually says. How are you going to take the system, when it's bolted to the ground? That you didn't think about that did you, you fool? He did not realize, that rack mounted equipment is not permanently attached to the mount. I guess he thought he had me checkmate, because it was all one system that you cannot take apart and not something that was put together. His jaw dropped the moment I removed the server and loaded it under the cart, after removing a couple of bolts quite easily. He started panicking and started telling the constable, that he would sue him if he didn't stop me. The constable simply stayed calm and ignored the owner. I guess after a bit he informed Tony that he needed to get out of his face and step back, but when Tony refused to back down, the constable undid his holster's safety harness and put his hand on his firearm. Tony's face was exquisite, full of fear, and eventually a dawning sensation, that this was going to happen one way or another. At first I did not understand why he was so riled up, and now seemed to have a total panicked face, like his world just collapsed until a bit later. I wrapped up my materials and left the rack. True to Tony's word, undoing the bolts proved difficult to impossible with the tools I had used, so I told Tony he could keep it for the new server he tries to set up. It didn't take more than two hours before I got a call from him, stating that he had talked to his attorney and he would be suing me for damages, and I would be going to jail for trespassing. I informed him that he didn't pay for the equipment, his equipment was repossessed thus, there was nothing to sue for. As far as trespassing, I was servicing a mechanics lien with a law enforcement officer, thus it is not trespassing. He then starts hemming and hawing, about how he needs to bill clients, because he hasn't had revenue in a week but his accountant can't do anything, because she has no access to the accounting software, and they have no copies. I informed him it was not my problem, I would not be giving access to the server nor data contained, and he should have paid for the equipment, instead of trying to screw me over for $8,000. He then offered to pay me if I could install the server back the same day, but that only if I did it that same day, otherwise he'd find someone else. I informed him that our original contract was null and void. I would be returning the equipment to my distributor, but first I had to wipe the storage by DOD standards, which means 0% chance of recovering files, unless he somehow had NSA level funds. He starts freaking out, and resorts back to what he usually did, threatens me to lawsuit, make my life a living hell etc. So I hang up and proceed to keep the conversation going by text. I told him I was going to proceed to delete his data that evening, and that I was no longer interested in working with him. He called me at least 50 times, I just silenced my phone and had a talk with my friend later that night, the friend whom had given me the advice before. My friend brainstormed why I would return the equipment, if I had the only copy that has everything from client names, contacts, phone numbers, billings, receivables etc. He asked me how much revenue the company generated, to which I informed him, I was taking a wild guess, but it was somewhere in the ballpark of $58,678.21, for the last month. He laughs and asked. Why don't you charge them double the price to get his equipment back, and have him pay you cash, before you start? He was right though, I was taking my petty revenge and walked out with a $1,800 firewall, which I had to pay in advance, and $500 in unpaid labor charge. Why not take it a step further, to get sweeter revenge and get paid a fat stack of money? The following day I messaged Tony, I apologized for the way I behaved yesterday, as it wasn't professional. Unfortunately your shitty attitude and attempts to screw me over got the better of me. The server has not be wiped yet. I would like to reconsider a new arrangement, so we can salvage this sour experience and turn it into sweet honey. Are you interested in working with me to get your equipment back? I must warn you though, it will be extra, since I would be doing double the work. Let me know. Tony immediately called me and his arrogant behavior came up with it. I knew you would change your mind and come crawling back, yes I want everything back, but I am only paying $8,050 and not a dime more. The $50 is me being generous, to give you a second chance to do things right. I immediately informed him that I still have all the equipment, and in fact it would only take maybe 20 minutes to complete the job, however, I had a different idea in terms of the price. 
The new price was $15,000 to be paid cash. He immediately starts yelling and hollering. I keep talking and inform him he has two weeks to decide if being able to get paid by his clients was worth it. If not, the equipment was going back and that would be that. No hard feelings. I hang up. About two days later, I get a call from Tony informing me he agreed to the new arrangement, and to please set it up and install it ASAP. I tell him I could do so on Friday, but I would need to be paid $15,000 cash, before I even unload a single bolt from my vehicle. He agreed. I could hear a lady talking in the background, telling him he needs to get this resolved, because they had no revenue in nearly two weeks. This was on Wednesday. On Thursday I get a call from his daughter, whom is apparently the accountant and the lady whom was telling him to resolve it. She is cutting a check and needs to know my name. I inform her, I would not be accepting checks, and I had told Tony specifically, it should be in cash. She says, okay, and tells me if the amount of $12,000 was correct. I once again correct her, and inform her the correct amount is $15,000 cash. She responded in satire, of course, it's $15,000, I will go make the withdrawal and have the money ready tomorrow. Sure enough, Friday morning, true to her words, she and Tony were there with $15,000 cash. I counted it in front of her and Tony. She makes a comment saying that I was a lifesaver, because they could not go back to the service they used before to get paid, and they urgently needed to get some payment orders sent out. I placed it in my vehicle, locked the glove box, and unloaded the equipment. True to my word it took me 20 minutes to place the server, firewall, and UPS inside the rack mount. Connected the cables power on the server and ask them to test it out when they get a chance. If anything was wrong, to not contact me and to have a good day. I actually had tested it out already, before I left their server room. Despite my pettiness at times, I am still a professional. One that's paid in cash. So this happened earlier today and was too perfect to not share with you guys. I work in construction as the foreman for a new house build. The location is kinda strange, the house is 250 feet up a hill via a footpath only. All of our materials have to come up this footpath by hand, it's a pain in the ass to manually carry, quite literally, an entire house up this hill. One of our saving graces, is having the two parking spots on the street at the bottom of this hill marked with official, no parking signs. Unfortunately, there is an elementary school about half a block away and the parents of children seem to regularly, at least twice a day, think it's okay to park in our spots. Now, I consider myself a reasonable person, so if someone is parked in the spots, and we don't have a delivery or a need to park a truck, I will let it go. If we need the spots and there's someone parked there however, I will ask them to move nicely, and most of the time they do so immediately. Until today. I get a phone call from the lumber delivery truck that is en route to our location. He says he'll be there in about 2 or 3 minutes. I let him know I will meet him at the street and make sure he has space to park. He's carrying all of the material to frame the roof of our house, which is a lot of really big lumber and will take easily an hour to bring up the hill. So naturally, I didn't want him parked in the middle of the street with his hazards on for an hour, when we have a perfectly good parking spot for him. As I begin my trip down the hill, I notice there is a school parent sitting in her car idling, assuming she's just waiting to pick up her child. I walk up to her car and politely let her know that she is parked in a no parking zone, and we really need her to clear it to park a delivery truck. She scoffs at me and rudely states back. I'll just be a few minutes, and your truck isn't here yet, take a chill pill dude. Before I can respond, a giant lumber truck comes around the corner and I wave to him, and then gesture towards him to the woman in the car, who has now put her window back up to ignore me. I put on my best customer service smile and wave at her through the window, she put it down halfway and angrily shouts. What? By now. The truck has pulled up alongside her car and I politely ask her again, with a stronger tone of voice to move her vehicle, reminding her, that she is illegally parked in a tow-away zone. Then, she gives me this wonderful idea, she says. Can't you guys just unload around me? Jesus, it's not that hard. I give her another smile and walk away, a vengeful brainwave gave spark, to a brilliant plan forming in my head. I instruct the delivery driver to park as closely to her as possible, and block her in with the porta potty that is at one end of our reserved spots, and the parked car that is parked just adjacent to our spots on the other end. He smiles, because he immediately gets what I'm trying to do, and proceeds to expertly block this lady and her car, into a little two parking spot jail. 
we unstrap the lumber and my guys begin humping material up the hill, meanwhile, I call the police parking enforcement to let them know the situation. At this point in time I wasn't trying to get her in trouble, I just wanted a record of why we were blocking part of the street, so we don't get in trouble with the city. The very friendly traffic officer lets me know that she can be there in about 30 minutes and deal with the situation for me, wonderful. As we continue to unload lumber, the child of the parent shows up, and wouldn't you know it, mom is just now realizing that the lumber truck is parked so close, she can't get out of her driver door to meet her kid. She awkwardly clambers across the inside of her car and stumbles out the passenger door, shooting glaring looks at me and the truck driver in the process. She loads her kid into the back and then begins to realize that she has no way of leaving. She comes storming up to myself and the driver and states, I'm in a big hurry, you need to move your damn truck right now so I can go. Before I can respond, the driver gets a grin on his face and says, Ma'am, in order to unload the lumber on the truck we had to unstrap it, and per our company policy, I'm not allowed to move the truck with any unsecured load on it. Sorry. This sends her into near aneurysm levels of blood pressure, meanwhile, I can barely contain my laughter. Frick your policy, I have somewhere to be. She barks back at him. At this point, with impeccably convenient timing, the parking enforcement officer shows up and parks behind the truck. She doesn't see the officer arrive and while the officer is still getting out of her vehicle, I just casually say, can't you just pull out around it? It's not that hard. With the biggest crap-eating grin I've ever had, I watch as she realizes that I just used her line on her. She yells and storms back to her car and angrily clambers back in through the passenger door and into the driver's seat. At this point, the officer is walking up to myself and the driver before she can even introduce herself. The mom in the car slams it into reverse and stomps on the gas, crashing into our porta potty and knocking it over and then throws the car into drive and tries to mount the curb and drive on the sidewalk. The officer, driver and I are staring in disbelief as she gets halfway over the curb and gets stuck. I can hear her screaming obscenities over the idling truck from inside her car. The officer promptly walks up to the door of the car and orders her out. My favorite part of the entire thing, is watching her face go to shock, as she realized she just did all of that in front of a police officer. She gets slapped in cuffs as the parking officer calls for a second unit and she is promptly sat on the very curb she tried to drive over. She sits on the curb yelling to the now two officers about how we told her she could stay there, and that we never asked her to move. The traffic officer responds that she was the one who was originally called, when she first refused to move and that she already knows what's going on. While myself and the driver are giving a report to the second officer, my guys finish moving the remainder of the lumber, and the driver finishes his statement and takes off to go back to the yard. By the end of the ordeal, she was arrested, charged with child endangerment, her kid was in the back of the car the whole time, reckless driving, destruction of property, the porta potty, and driving on a suspended license. On top of all that, she also got her car towed, the kid went home with his grandma and she went to spend some quality time in a cell. I never expected her to actually heed my advice to just pull out around it. But I think next time, she'll probably think twice about parking in a tow away zone, if she ever gets a license again. Thank you for enjoying this episode, which was made with artificial love. Subscribe to receive future episodes, and tickle the like button for good karma. Do you have any experiences surrounding this topic? Share yours below, I'll join the conversation. And I'll be seeing you, in the next one.